It's the Riot Podcast, Monday, July 10th. I, Hudson, am back. Hud, uh, Isaiah never left, uh, really. I mean, you had a bachelor party over the weekend, but you still you still did the show and everything. I was still in every day, yep. Uh-huh. Uh, here's a question for you. When you go to the airport, when you got a flight, how early, how far ahead of time do you get to the airport? Do you plan on it? At least an hour. At least an hour. That's usually my at least an hour. And that's uh, like, what's the what's the longest ahead of time you'd ever go to the airport? That I've ever gotten there. That ever I would go there. Yeah, you ever would. Mm. You can imagine, envision getting there. Like planning on it, maybe like an hour and a half, that's an hour it. forty. Yeah, I'm not going earlier than that. Yeah, for me, because I always I'm not a big stressor. I always make it. So yeah, I haven't had a time. I only had a couple times where I've called it close, where it's been kind of difficult. But also, you got to know the weekend, the time you're getting on the flight, what mm-hmm. day it is, things like that. But I can't imagine getting that there earlier than like an hour 40 Yeah, for two, me. Two hours is the absolute max I can picture getting there. Yeah. But listen to this. Um, so this weekend or this past week, I was in Connecticut. It was uh, we're going there for Fourth of July. It's kind of a little makeshift family reunion. So me and like my wife went and then we had some other family fly in as well. And it all, one thing we do when we go to Connecticut for this family is uh, that we don't rent a car because one is expensive and two, like we're always, it's a family thing. So we're always hanging out together. They have enough seats in their car. So they just come pick us up, drop us off at the airport. Everybody gets along, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but they are super, the, like the people we are staying with, super into being at the airport way, way early which only affects when they take you back to the airport. Yeah. And it was one thing for us. Our flight was in the, the return flight was in the afternoon. So they're always like, you got to get there at least, at least two hours at a time. Cause you just never know. You never know what it could be like. The, the door, the line could be out the window. Two hours around the building. Yeah. So much time. But listen to this. So again, ours was in the, the afternoon on Friday. So not as big of a deal. The uh, one of the other people that was there had a 6 a.m. return flight. And these people are talking about dropping him off at like 3 a.m. No chance. I don't even think the airport's open at that no time. No shot. At, at that hour. You're dropping me off at 3 a.m. for a 6 a.m. flight. Yeah, but they're like, you never know. These, you know, they're parents. So like, you just, you never know. You could, you just have no idea. It could be, there could be a line that would, your eyes wouldn't be able to behold it because it could be so long. And if there's any time it's going to be that, it's going to be at 3 a.m. Yeah, apparently so. So you got to get there. See, I'm thinking, like, if it's a 6 a.m. flight, I'm getting there at, like, 4.45. Yeah. Like, 4.45, and I'm feeling pretty confident I'm going to get through, and I'll be okay. Yeah. No, I know, right, that it's different at different airports. Flying out of where, like, where, where I'm flying, it's usually not a big deal. Maybe if you're going, like, I don't know. I don't know what will be a biz or real busy airport. That it might just depends. Able- yeah. And I think too, I think the difference is as well is if you're familiar with the airport, mm-hmm. because there's been times where I've like, when I flew into Seattle, I was really confused because their airport's huge. You have yeah. to take a, a subway and like do all these things inside of it. They have like a shuttle you have to do. Mm-hmm. And so it's different if you're in an airport that you're not very comfortable with, or if it's a really big one and you aren't going to know how to navigate it as well, then maybe you need some more time. But if you've, if you've been in the airport a couple of times, it's like your home airport. Yeah. You you should know what you're doing. Yeah, we've we've gone at numerous times to this airport to we fly into Hartford to see this family and and uh it's never taken more than 15 minutes to get through the no. TSA line and we know it's exactly always. where we're going. And so we just kind of post up at the at one of the restaurants there and spend way too much money killing time because they drop us off so early. But Yeah, you, know, you don't want to be there be there that early just one of those things that you just kind of accept when you go visit family yeah i feel like as as you get as you get more experience flying you, you should be taking less time uh-huh. at, in the tsa and all that stuff yeah and so but at the same time i know people have kids and it's a lot more stressful with kids and things like that too mm-hmm. for me i'm by myself i just fly through it yeah it's, i mean it's just me so easy, it's easy breezy money. cover girl yeah, precisely. So for you, I'm sure it was uh, you had plenty of time. At least, at least you made it back. I'm glad that you made it back. If yeah. you didn't make it back, then made I would back, be yelling no at you. No issues. You know, we flew uh, we flew Breeze Airways, mm-hmm. and I don't know if other airlines do this because I haven't flown on them in so long. But Breeze, if everybody gets through the TSA line, like you, know, like they can track that, right? I'm assuming, anyways. Yeah. Then they will start boarding the plane early. 
if, oh, the, nice. if the plane is there and every and they know that like people are available to be uh, ready to go on, yeah, they'll start boarding it early. Boarding we, up early. We nice. made it early both times. Oh, that's real uh, nice. For our flights. So yeah, actually, not too bad. Makes not for too good, shabby. Good, so good reviews of Breeze. That also means that all the the Breeze passengers really punctual. A oh, very punctual. <laughs> yeah, punctual bunch we are. Well, everybody got there early, so it makes sense. Uh, I'm glad uh, everybody hopefully had a great July 4th week, and uh, we definitely, we came back with a bang today in the show and in, in my return. Some good stuff for you. And uh, I don't know if I have anything else to add. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Not used to talking this much. <laughs> it's the riot. Disinformation. Mispronunciations. Bad impressions. That's Hudson. This is the riot on Radio U. Now, Isaiah just got back from Connecticut, of course. Yes. Uh, flew both ways. And I, I had a thought about kids on airplanes. It's a, it's a thing that lots of people love to complain about, right? Children on airplanes. Children in general. <laughs> sure. Children in general. People love to complain. And after my two flights this weekend, here's what I'm thinking. I think if you complain about kids on airplanes... You sound old. You think so? Yeah. You know what that is? It's a boomer complaint. I'll tell you why. Because if you go back in time, say, I don't know, 15, 20 years, when did people get phones? Probably about 2000. I don't even, I don't even know. 2009? Yeah, that sounds about 2004? right. 2004? I like that. I don't know. If you go back to before, to before, to when we were children, maybe. Yep. Uh, we probably were. We were probably obnoxious on a plane. Of course. I wouldn't want to be on a plane with six-year-old me, but six-year-old me didn't have an iPad. Six-year-old and uh, 25-year-old and 40-year-old other people on the plane with six-year-old me may not have had uh, headphones. They may not have had a phone to pop in their AirPods. But now it's 2023. And I on my two flights, I was on a budget airline. So it was like, a third of the plane was kids. Because mm-hmm. it's one thing to pay $500 for yourself to fly, but you don't want to pay $500 for your five-year-old to fly. No chance. You, you want to pay the least amount possible. Put them in the little seat, you know? Uh-huh, yeah. They can be tighter, it's okay. Uh-huh, and you, you'll suffer along because you don't want to spend an extra, like, the amount. Anyways, uh, so there's a lot of kids. And they were all quiet because they all had Paw Patrol on an iPad. And they weren't bothering anybody. Oh, sounds like you had a good flight then. It was a fine flight. Three flights ago, I got a drink poured on me by a child. A so child. I don't have that same. He didn't, he didn't have an iPad? I don't have that same thing that you're going through. Yeah. I'm glad that you had a good flight. Uh huh. But I don't have that same that same feeling about it, unfortunately. I, don't know. I think it's all about experience. If you have one bad experience, you can ruin it for a while. Yeah. I think I think what you have a complaint about is is the parents, not a child. Well, I mean, that's the constant struggle, right? Whose yeah. fault is it? It's, I don't have kids, so I'm gonna put it on the child. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I just thought I just I looked out. I was literally on my on my flight home. I was at the back of the plane, and I just saw I just saw a plane full of children, and not a single one making a noise. And if they were, I couldn't hear them because I had my AirPods in. Of course, you have your own headphones. Uh huh. So you know, I just thought this that's so out. It's so outdated. It's so yesteryear thinking. To say that kids are a problem on planes. See, but then you would say if there is one screaming on a plane, uh-huh. what the heck is going on? Yeah. Is it even is it, it even makes worse? it even more yeah, it makes it it's even more, more egregious. egregious. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think so too. More upsetting. But it, kids in general is not the problem. Specific children occasionally on a plane, but that can be any I that's, mean I mean that's in any children's topic. And a, there's ad- lots of good kids. <laughs> adults as well. You won't hear a show like this anywhere else. And that's probably for the best. The worst of the riot. Radio U. Here's some great video and viral over the weekend of a robbery gone wrong, gone horribly wrong in Atlanta. I have a guy, he was trying to hold up a nail salon. Interesting choice. I was thinking the same thing. Like, Wouldn't wh- be my first place to rob by the same time. Seems like an easy target. I guess. I guess if we play this out, right? If if we consider this man to be a criminal mastermind, which he clearly wasn't, but you could see the thought process of maybe you're thinking, "I'm a man. I go to a nail salon. I can. Inti- it's just probably going to be a bunch of women. I can intimidate them, right? Maybe not much competition, right? Like no one's going to stop you in there, possibly. You right? feel maybe you feel less 
uh, yeah, less you expect less that there'd be some kind of big tough man that's going to stand up to you. But then again, there could be a woman with like pepper spray. Yep, that's and true. Boom, it's over. But that didn't even happen to this guy. This guy walks into a nail salon. He's shouting out, "Give give me all your money, give me everything you got," type stuff. You know, typical. Typical robber. The go-tos. Yeah, uh, vernacular. And it appears that he has a gun. But the both the customers and the employees, in something that feels like it would have to be premeditated, just all ignore him. Just Don't give say him a the, word. The cold shoulder. They barely acknowledge the guy. Which, how is it even possible, you know? How could they all be on so the same page? That they all just, you know, that there wasn't one person that panicked and freaked out and got on the ground or started handing over money or whatever to say, please don't shoot. And was like, a, here you go. Not a single one. And there's several people in there. The, my favorite part, there's two great parts. Um, he, walk, he, he walks, there's a woman who's sitting by the door. She seems to be dressed in scrubs. I think she might be a nurse or whatever. And she, uh, like, he walks in. He kind of walks towards the counter, and then he turns back around, and she's standing. She's gotten up and standing by the door, and he kind of uh, directly addresses her, and he's like, "Give me all your money." And she just kind of shrugs and walks out the door, and he does nothing. And yeah, then he doesn't do a thing. He doesn't do a thing. And then he, after a few more shouting out of, uh, you know, "Give me everything," he, you can see he kind of loses steam. And then he just kind of shrugs and walks out too. See, I think his big issue was he's like pretending to have a gun, I think. Yeah, that's what I think it is too. I think it, he, there's no confirmation that he had a gun. Well, although, he has his hand in a bag. Yeah. He has his hand in a purse pretty much. And he never pulls or flashes the gun. Mm -hmm. He's just pretending to be holding something in the purse. And so I think that was his big mistake. Had he actually had a gun and pulled it out, I think that would have been more intimidating. Well, clear, yes, clearly. But he looks like a crazy person with his hand in the purse just uh -huh. yelling. He looks like he's he's lost his mind. Yeah. I mean, I believe that that is a, that's a, a tactic that people will use. Sometimes they have a gun, sometimes they don't. But they'll conceal it that way to, you know, for whatever reason. But in his case, yeah, he just seems like he was all bark and no bite and actually didn't have a gun. The so when people is, didn't abide by his request. He looks like he's like... Literally holding, like he makes it look like the purse is the gun that he's holding. Like he's literally like I pretending to fire yeah, at people just, pretty much. He's just really bad. At he's it. just throwing it in their faces. I don't know. It makes no sense. Nobody's intimidated. He also, I mean, the, the whole by the end of the video too. Yeah, you can just tell the defeat when he walks out. Oh yeah, he looks. He he just looks foolish, and he can tell. He just knew the best thing to do is just get out of there like, calmly. What does he do now? He just walks home? Yeah. You just leave and you're like, dang, I couldn't even rob the salon. Nobody was even scared enough to give me their money. Uh huh. Like, what kind of a robber are you? What's what your a, next plan? What a blow to the ego there. That is a huge blow to the ego. Now he probably has no money and he's really insecure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the only thing Isaiah loves more than the riot is himself. Someone who probably still lives with his mother and hates himself. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. When is a pancake not a pancake? When, when it's, it's a, a waffle. When it's a waffle. That, how is that a possibility? When it's a crepe. Are, are crepes pancakes? Would you consider them pancakes? I would consider them different because they're so thin. Yeah. Um, it's a different, a different feel for how me. How do you know? Where do you draw the line between when it's a really thin pancake and when it's a crepe or a really thick crepe? Because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you just know? Because you can just tell because the crepe is just so, it's so like paper thin. Uh huh. It's so good. So too. what thickness does it become a pancake? I would say past like, uh, maybe like a quarter inch, maybe, maybe a quarter inch. Yeah. Uh -huh. I would say like that. If you're like at a quarter inch, maybe that thick. Okay. Um, Here's when a pancake isn't a pancake, when it's a taco. At That's IHOP. true. Uh, IHOP is taking the beloved pancake and turning it into something completely different. They are using their silver dollar pancakes, folding them up in half and using them as taco shells, makeshift taco shells for a, what do you call it? When it's a quartet of new tacos that they are offering starting now through the end of this month. Four different tacos you could get where a pancake is the shell. 
let me tell you about the four different pancake tacos you can get. Strawberry cheesecake pancake taco. It's that fresh, sounds great. Fresh sliced strawberries and creamy cheesecake mousse inside a folded silver dollar pancake. So far, my favorite. Well. Uh, let's go on. Let's one see. for one. Uh, caramel banana pancake tacos. Mm, I like banana too. Creamy cheesecake mousse drizzled with vanilla sauce and dulce de leche caramel sauce topped with sliced bananas inside a folded silver dollar pancake. That sounds pretty good too. You know what I love about these two is that at breakfast time, that's a meal. Yeah. If you tried to involve anything with cheesecake and dulce de leche caramel sauce, for lunch or dinner, people would laugh at you. But for breakfast, you order that, people are like, okay. okay. Works for me. You, you're getting eggs with it, or is that just your meal? Uh, either way, it's fine. Um, you also have the breakfast pancake tacos, scrambled eggs, hickory smoked bacon, jack and cheddar cheese blend, and white cheese sauce inside a folded silver dollar pancake. And uh, you could even top it with salsa for a hint of spice. For those that are a little bit more traditional. Uh-huh. You want to get like all of your breakfast all in one. And then finally, this is the one that speaks to me, of course, and that is the country chicken and gravy pancake taco, which is crispy chicken, shredded hash browns, and country gravy inside a folded silver dollar pancake. And it, they also suggest topping it with pickles, which I would never do. I think an important thing for this that you guys need to realize as well, because you guys can't see the photos, it is served to you as if you were at like a Mexican restaurant uh -huh. in those little, how would you describe those little silver trays? I don't know, they're, they're taco holders. Yeah, they're, they're taco holders that it comes with. And then on the side, it almost is like you have a little salsa dish, but it's filled with like chocolate chips or pickles or whatever the, the side of choice is. It looks super good. I it, think it looks real creative. They do look tasty, and if we were to go to IHOP at some point, I would definitely try some of these. So would I. It looks like you get three. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned if that would be enough to fill me up or not, if that would, you know, constitute an actual breakfast. Well, it's only $6. Well, that's a good deal. So it's super cheap. Well, then, in but, that case, now I'm really considering it. And you think about, too, like the silver dollar pancakes, no traditional adult usually would order those. No. So this is a good way for them to take something that's already on their menu that probably isn't one of their more popular items uh -huh. and make it seem a little bit more fun. Yeah. So I'm I'm behind this. I'm I'm in a, you know maybe we should try some of these for the show. I think so. I was going to say that. That's yeah. why I put it in here because I like this food fight idea. It sounds fantastic. And then an idea to take it to the next level. I'm thinking why stop using why stop with using pancakes as taco shells? Why not use crepes as tortillas? That sounds fantastic. I'm but, a big crepe guy. Yeah. The only way you can make a taco better, a, or a burrito better, is with a crepe. That's true. We're not sure who behaves worse. The riot or their dogs. I don't even know how to behave like a real human being. The riot. Radio U. Thursday on the show, we do a little segment we like to call Choice Champions, where Isaiah and I, we do basically a fantasy draft of some kind of random topic. And we initiated, uh, you initiated Nikki into the Choice Champions uh, arena this past Thursday while I was out on vacation. You guys drafted your favorite chicken restaurants. We did, yes. And I, I don't know about you when you're on vacation. I listen to the podcast. I can't be expected to wake up early enough to listen to the show when I'm on vacation, but I did listen to the podcast. And so I heard you and Nikki's Choice Champions draft of chicken restaurants. Our rundown, yeah. And what I heard was disheartening. You think so? What I heard was upsetting, and I think there's not one but two errors so egregious that I don't think we can, I surely don't think Nikki can be allowed back in Choice Champions. Well, people aren't going to like you to say that. I think Nikki is always allowed to participate in Choice Champions if she wants. If you don't want her to... You guys can figure that out between you two. I think, uh, I think her choice champions. Uh, it's just uh, so. Let's lay this out for I people. I thought she was fairly creative. She was creative. I thought she was very creative, which but, makes for a good radio personality. Yeah, but you guys, you may, you had such glaring omissions and such random. I mean, so Nikki had the first choice, right? All the chicken restaurants. You can have any chicken from any restaurant, and she cho chose. McDonald's chicken nuggets. Which are legendary. Unacceptable. One of the most well-known chickens the only, across I mean, the world. I mean, they're fine, but 
I mean, I guess it's it's she, she didn't pick Burger King chicken nuggets. It's a legendary choice. It's not the best chicken of all chicken restaurants, but it is the most well known chicken of all chickens. That's that's debatable. I would say probably. I would say if you went across the world and asked anybody if they knew what McDonald's chicken nuggets were, I think that would be the most well known chicken. Hmm. A McNugget? You could even just say a McNugget, and I think the majority of the world would know what that is. That's uh, that's possible. But you do underestimate that KFC is real popular overseas. KFC is popular. Not as popular here. I don't care. You guys left out KFC. I kind of, I'm glad they don't yeah. deserve to be. They've they've fallen off. Tough times for KFC. But what you guys both omitted was not only Chick Fil A, which a lot of people were wisely pointed out. You go through six chicken restaurants, you don't pick Chick Fil A. Well, it wasn't in my top three. What a, what what are you guys I'm just, doing? I've always been a Chick Fil A hater. That's been that's been a widely known stance for me on the show. You can't have a. You so can't I'm not going to put it in my list. Why would I put something in my list that I widely hate? That doesn't make any sense. You hate Chick Fil A. That's not that I hate Chick Fil A. I just think you it's just wild. said it. I said it's wildly overrated. It's wildly overrated. Chick Fil A is great. Yeah, and we're going to talk about how they're so quick in the drive-through for the 37th time. It's uh, one of the. It's surely one of the top six chicken restaurants. Wasn't it in my top three? It's not. It's not my fault. And the number one chicken restaurant that you guys completely ignored is Popeye's. I knew that you would say that, but yet again, for me, that's not in my top three. If you would like to participate, you could have. You just weren't here. Yeah, I wasn't here. Well, <laughs> I'm hearing your top three, which is which is fine. Actually, I didn't have a, I didn't take major issue. What did you I pick like again? I picked Canes. Uh-huh, fine. I picked B-dubs, and yeah. I picked Wings Over, which I felt were all three. I mean, for me, those are three of my favorites. I'll tell you what. Uh, if I had to take issue with one, it would be Raising Cane's, and that's because, and I just had Raising Cane's, and Raising Cane's chicken is fine, but it's not good. The sauce is good. The sauce it, is great. But, I mean, we are talking restaurant, though, but Popeye's. Yeah. Popeye's I also had recently, and to the audacity for the both of you to just ignore it. I just, um, yet again, for me, I'm, I'm, if I'm picking restaurants that I routinely go to, uh-huh. I haven't been to, I've only been to Popeye's once in my life. Yeah, that's so you're missing out. I've been to KFC a, a bunch of times, but uh-huh. I've been to neither. Which is a mistake. I've been to neither in the past year. I said I've been to KFC this year. I have not been to Popeyes this year, so I can't put it into my list if I haven't if I haven't attended. It needs that to feels wrong. It needs I'm not to gonna change. put this out to my listeners. Well, now, now your whole chicken expertise has been called into question. I've been to Canes, I've been to B I've been to Wings Over a bunch. Those are just places that I like. I'm 24 years old. I know what I like and what I don't like. It's and I it's don't like Popeyes. Ridiculous, and I hate to have to do this, but although I was not even present for Choice Champions on Thursday, I have no no other recourse but to declare myself the winner. We're not sure who behaves worse, the riot or their dogs. I don't even know how to behave like a real human being. The riot. Radio you. Have you seen uh, videos of people fake proposing going around on TikTok? I have not. You haven't seen, I wouldn't say, I don't know if it's a trend, although you follow the, like, if you follow TikTok via the news, anything that happens three times on TikTok is a trend. It's a trend, yes. Yeah, but, I mean, multiple people have done this, and some of them fairly notable, uh, the idea of a a man and a woman, a relationship, and then the man will, will take an opportunity to get down on one knee, a la... When Jim from the office gets down on one knee to tie his shoe to fake Pam out. Yes. And they'll do this like over and over again routinely. I have one guy here. Do you, uh, are you familiar with Farmer Will from Love Island? He's in the newest season. Mm-hmm. I haven't watched it yet, but I have seen some TikToks of him on there. Apparently for him. Likeable uh, character, apparently. Apparently. But not when he fake proposes. He says anytime for him, it's anytime he's out with his girlfriend and they get a stranger to take their picture. Makes it way like, better. Yeah, that, I mean, that is a great time. If you're going to fake propose, that's hilarious. And so that's what he's doing, and uh, there's several other guys. And so the internet, TikTok, divided over whether this is funny or whether it's insensitive to the women in the equation. What say you? I think it depends on your relationship with your gal. If you have a girl that you think can... Can take the joke, then yeah, yeah. But you got to know your girl, and if she's not going to take that well, I wouldn't do it. Well, when does it get? I would old? avoid that. When does it get old, though? I just yet again, I think it depends on relationship to relationship. There's some girls that probably could take the joke every single time, mm-hmm. and there's some girls that the first time you do it, they're going to be so mad at you, you'll never recover. You'll never be able to real propose. So you got to know your girl, and so if if you think that she can take it time after time after time, 
then you just keep on doing it. Yeah, but there's a difference between she can take it and she likes it. Mm, well, well, that's not the point. If you put your... Yeah, it is. No, it's not. You put yourself in a woman's shoes. No. And that's not how relationships she's work. She's like, well, I really like you outside of the, uh, of the fake proposal joke. I don't think it's that funny, but I'll stay with you. Versus, ah, eh, that's actually pretty funny. You got me. See, this is the difference between, like ideal relationship and like realistic ones uh-huh. is when you're you're in a relationship obviously you want to make your partner as happy as possible but also a top three thing is making them a little bit upset it's one of the more fun <laughs> things when you can do it in a joking way i uh-huh. think that's one of my favorites actually i think this is a risky one mm, uh, yeah, and, yeah i think it depends on the as, on your girl as several people pointed out it's not just will she take the joke will she think it's funny time after time when you're doing it multiple times but it's also if you do it time after time then what if you want to do it for real one day and she's not going to believe it? You better take a that, long break. That, that b- kind between of them. ruins the real time you do it. Yeah, you shouldn't and fake you want it. The, you want the real time to be special. Yeah, you shouldn't fake it right before you, you're you going to do it for real. Yeah. You can do this early on in the relationship where it's obvious that you aren't uh, proposing, I think. But once you get is to that, that point, the ideal time to do it. I think it is in like the very beginning. Three months in. Yeah, because she obviously knows you're actually not proposing. But the joke is. Is it the person who's taking your photo at the time is like, oh my gosh, they have no idea that this isn't the real one. I think that's funnier. I think when you're at a point where you actually could be proposing, it's not funny to joke about. That's a good line. I think that's dangerous. If if there's any chance the receiving end of the proposal could take it seriously, don't don't fake it. But it's all for the person who's taking that photo. Nothing better. Add a little riot to your Instagram feed. Follow at Radio U Official. The Riot. Radio U. I just got back from Connecticut. I, that's where I went for the 4th of July trip to New England. It was a family vacation, like to visit family there. So to sum up the trip, it wasn't. we didn't do a whole lot of super exciting stuff. You know, 4th of July was kind of... I wouldn't say low key, but we all, you know, we just grilled out, ate well, whatever. Relaxed, yep. Uh huh. Um, so I ate well throughout throughout the trip. Um, what else? What interesting happened? I went fishing. Did you catch a fish? I did. I caught a fish. Do you have a photo of it? Uh, I think I might have some photos. Is it your profile picture on any social media? <laughs> no, it is okay, not. I didn't know for sure. I, I haven't updated my social media didn't know for, uh, for sure. a while. But actually, that maybe that'd be. Impressive, you think? I think so. You think make me happy? Yeah. Um, I don't know if fishing is for me. Didn't like it. Yeah, you know, I just don't think I enjoy prying a hook out of a live fish's mouth. That is the worst part. That's not something that really the hook out of it. It's not worth the rest of it to me. Did you do it? I did it. Yeah. I just don't. Think I did it multiple times. Actually, I caught a couple fish. I just don't think I, I. And forget about putting a worm on a hook. Also, not something that I particularly call me. Uh, you know, weak. That's call a little me. bit satisfying for me. Putting the worm on the hook. You like that part? There's something about just like puncturing the worm uh-huh. that sounds weird and kind of in a, a mean way. But yeah. there's something satisfying about like you know like folding it over and putting it on there i don't know i like that part. you enjoy that that was one of my fi- that's one of my highlights of fishing <laughs> so you're Usually good with that I you don't, don't like catch the fish you don't like pulling the hook out of the fish no mouth. no chance now where do you stand on ripping the worms in half so you have more worms i'm fine with that you're good with that too usually i like to put a full one on there though. oh no and i usually if i'm if i'm going to be doing it i want uh, to come strapped with worms so i can put full ones on there and i can geez. really fold them up yet again more satisfying you're crushing the worm population that's how it is the way you're doing it uh, so, yeah, I don't know if that is something that I will go back to anytime soon as far as the fishing is concerned. But uh, the highlight of the trip, absolutely going to the beach. I got to go to the beach for a while. That exciting? Uh, which I did. I had a good time there. But it leads me to my question. What do you, where do you stand? And I want everybody to chime in at 8772 Radio U. And you have a beach day. Where do you stand on bringing a, a Bluetooth to the beach? A speaker? Yeah. You can bring a spray up. You yeah. think that's okay? Mm, yep. Because here's what happened to me. Searching for a spot on the beach, the options were, I mean, basically we either could be near somebody playing Hakuna Matata on their Bluetooth. Yes. One choice. Not offensive. The, or like, how do I put it? Like graphic 
we're getting it on music. Okay, got it. Yeah. Setting the mood at the beach. Yeah. But like for. with a lot of, uh, you know, I mean. Expletives, just like aggressive, uh-huh, aggressive like music. Like really graphically explaining not what's like, going to happen. Not like relaxing music. No. Not at all. Not like not laying by the beach. Not what I would beach. consider that way. Got it. Uh, and so that was, those two were kind of competing in a way. And then third group comes along and beats them all by going much louder with to every Taylor Swift song imaginable. I knew it. Yep. So obnoxious they are nowadays. They want it out. Although between the three, Have I we definitely not heard it enough? I was definitely in on the compared to the three. Now yeah. I I brought my own Bluetooth, but I just there has to be I feel like there needs to be rules. Because what happens is either you have this where everybody's competing and turning up their Bluetooth as loud as it will go because you brought it, and so you want to listen to your music. Yep. But then the other person's drowning out your music, so it just turns into a competition. But then if you don't bring a Bluetooth at all, then you're just at the mercy of everybody else, and you don't want that. So, Or just sit there in silence, which some people would enjoy. I'd probably prefer that over four different types of music that none of them I would choose. So, I don't know. I just feel like we need some rules. We need some some yeah. kind of boundaries. Usually for me, it's like if you, you got to read the room of like who's your, who's surrounding you. Mm-hmm. And so when you're picking the music to play on your speaker, you need to look around you to see who's around. Yeah. To see like what could be appropriate things to play. Oh, so are you saying that the person with the getting it on music was trying to send a message? I think that they should have read the room better. Yeah. It seems as if they did not read the room. Uh-huh. Um, they looked over at you. Maybe that's what they thought that they, you would yeah. want them, them to play. That's what I, I wanted know. to hear, yeah. Um, How did they know? Usually you would read the room, see there's children around. Uh-huh. If it's mainly adults, maybe we don't play Hakuna Matata. I don't know. I feel like uh, also, I think also the, the way you point your speaker matters. Yeah. I think that if you have like a huge big speaker... Then number one, you need to turn it down. You can't be doing full volume at the beach. That's yeah. crazy talk. It just needs That's to be loud Taylor enough. That's what Taylor Swift crew is doing. Yeah, it needs to be loud they enough. They thought who could possibly not want to listen to this. Yeah, exactly, which is never never the case. Yeah. There's always a large group of people that don't like your music. So what you need to do is have it loud enough to where your people can hear it. When it only it's your group, mm-hmm. whatever direction makes the most sense for just you all to be able to hear it. And then also make sure that the music you're playing seems appropriate for all audiences surrounding. Yeah. But the most important thing words, is don't blare the volume. Yeah. Find more Riot content online. Riot.radiou.com. Does your pet have a pet peeve? What's something that drives your dog or cat or whatever else you may have just, just up a wall? You can tell that they get real upset. Text into the show, 8772 Radio U. I'll tell you, Regina says that her cat hates when her belly is touched, but sometimes it's just too tempting. You just have to. Oh, yeah, you got to rub your pet's stomach. Got to touch the stomach. It's just such like a a go-to scratch spot. I was thinking, I don't have a cat anymore, but it feels like everything you do is a pet peeve to a cat sometimes. Cats can be grumpy. Yeah. They can be a grumpy animal. There's a whole, like, you know internet persona made up of that so that is true uh that is a good one uh let's see what else do we have here jake says that his dog hates decorative pillows with the buttons on them oh the buttons interesting yeah, got a set of the pillows the decorative pillows the buttons and the dog chewed each of the buttons off of the pillow and then left them all in a one neat little pile Ooh. was not pleased with the decorative buttons i'm actually with that what's the point of the decorative pop buttons? I guess they're decorative. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm not a fan. Yeah, for me, my dog Jim, the one that he's been doing as of late, he gets real upset when I bump him when he sleeps. Bump him when he sleeps? To the point where Jim, my dog, he's a basset down, right? And he's yeah. a big sleeper. He sleeps for the majority of the day. Uh-huh. When I sleep in bed with Jim, because he sleeps in my bed, unfortunately, yes. And uh, if I bump him in the middle of the night... He gets so angry. He'll let like a growl out. Uh-huh. He's growling now, which he's never done before. Uh oh. He's he's becoming a very very grumpy sleeper. It's something that I'm trying to get him to stop doing, but it's the only time he's mean is if I bump him while he's sleeping or trying to take a nap. Yeah. He is now getting very grumpy when I do that, so which that... I'm not doing on purpose. I'm yeah. just like rubbing up against him, touching his back leg, whatever it is. It could be the slightest of baby touches on the back of his leg. Upset. Uh, so he, now he gets to the point where he like tries to snuggle me, and I'm like, dude, you're right up next to me. I'm going to touch you at some point probably yeah. when I roll over tonight, and you're going to be upset. Add it to the laundry list of issues with 
with Jim the dog. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, as if he needed more. Brian says that when his dog starts, uh, when his dog sees another dog on TV, she'll start barking wildly. Ooh, pet peeve of the yeah, pets. I like a, it. <laughs> that is a tough one. How do you, you can't control that. You no, know. you can't stop that. Yeah, there's no way you can just avoid watching all shows with dogs and then that's <laughs> difficult. Uh, Caitlin says, my dog really hates when you make farting sounds at her. You can easily avoid that. You don't yeah, have like, to. It sounds like that's like a fun one to do. Though. Yeah. Why do we get such enjoyment of irritating our dogs? Like when people like blow in the dog's nose. Like yeah. we all know they hate that, but we still do it. Yeah. For me, for my dog, Zafira, she hates water to the point that if she's outside she loves going outside she'll just peruse the backyard but if you turn on the hose while she's outside she will dart inside even though the hose may be nowhere near her but she will dart inside the door open up the door and she'll go in and she actually knows if she's inside and i turn on the hose she, she hates starts, that too. She hates that. She hates no the hose way. being turned on. She, so hates, she the hates the hose. And what I don't understand is that she hates water. She won't get in our pool. Um, she doesn't enjoy a shower, but she'll she'll do it. She'll listen because she's a good dog. But I don't understand when we got her. She, you know, you think, oh, maybe she had some kind of like traumatic water experience before we got her. But she didn't. She used to go swimming. We took her to the lake. She'd go swimming or whatever. And uh, at some point along the way, not. And I don't think we've ever had a traumatic water experience, but for some reason along the way, <laughs> she's become deathly afraid of, of really all water. Well, at least she has something that she's scared of. Yeah. That's an important thing. Let's if you can figure line. it out. Yeah. If you want her to come inside, uh-huh. you know how to get her inside right away. Yeah. You turn that right. hose on, she's, she's gone. She's done. Yeah. That's she's perfect. done for. If your pet has a good pet peeve, something that bothers them, 8772 radio use this information mispronunciations bad impressions that's hudson this is the riot on radio U. I don't know if you saw this video go viral from last week uh the guy who jumped off of the fire island ferry near new york city did you I see, did this? see this one yeah this is a wild video did you see this guy he so he jumps off of the ferry to go to fire island i guess he's, he's probably coming back I would say Mm -hmm. return trip and to the mainland and he jumps off. He's getting cheered on by many people on the ferry. And then he wound up, even though there was like, uh, you know, people trying to coax him back to throw him a life raft and stuff like that. He ignored all their instructions and wound up swimming all the way to shore. And then as soon as he got to shore, he was arrested. Now that usually is what I would expect to happen. Yeah. Makes I, sense. I don't know if you if anybody realizes this, but it's actually a really serious, fairly serious crime to jump to go overboard intentionally off of even like a ferry like that. Forget about a, a cruise ship or like bigger vessels at sea. Even for this ferry, there's signs posted across the ferry that say you could face up to a twenty five thousand dollar fine. That's a huge fine. Yeah. Not worth it if you get that one. 25000 definitely not worth it. In this case, this guy probably facing more likely his uh, identity not been disclosed yet, by the way, but he's probably facing $2,500. That's still not a worth it. vast difference. What have I told you, though, that reportedly he jumped off right after somebody said, I'll give you $1,000 to do it. Mm. So it's really if he gets that thousand dollars, it's only costing him fifteen hundred. But listen, he's not getting that. You don't think he's getting the thousand? He's not getting that thousand dollars. As soon as as soon as I landed ashore, I'd be sending a Venmo request to that person for a thousand dollars. He's for sure not getting that money. Nobody's sending him a thousand dollars for that. He earned it. But I'm sure he. I mean, and, he did. And he did do it. But I guarantee it was like a. I'd give you a thousand bucks to do it. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden you turn back around and he's over he's the ledge. He's shirtless and jumping off the boat, yeah. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. It was like one of those jokes where you say, like, I'm going to give you money, but I really wouldn't Yeah. if you actually did it. I guess when he did get ashore, he couldn't send a Venmo request anyways. He wouldn't have a phone. Not in jail. Probably. Yeah, not in jail and not after swimming all that way. I don't know if his phone would survive the trip. What you think as well, like, I think that he's more likely to get a higher fine. There's no way they're going to give him the two, the $2,500 fine. Yeah. Because this went viral. 
I yeah, think so they, they need to make an example. Yeah, they're going to make an example of him. If he was Teach just like a lesson. regular everyday guy. Well, that I think did he this, is. Well, yeah, I'm saying, but if it didn't go viral, there was no video, I think he'd get that $2,500 one. But since this is all, all over TikTok online, they're for sure going to rack it up a little bit more. Yeah, but here's the thing you're missing. Because it is all over TikTok and online. I mean, did you hear the cheers of the people on the boat? They, they were loved cheering. It. He was a hero. He was a hero for his... I mean, it is a stupid act. They say the best case scenario is you get charged $2,500 fine. Worst case scenario is, and this has happened to people, you get like sucked under the boat. You're, you're chopped up to bits by the propellers that are making the boat move. Which for it's a big a boat like this, yeah, very dangerous. It's a very real possibility. But nevertheless, he is a hero for this. And he's gone viral. You set up a, a GoFundMe. People are going to fund it. You're you're fine. Oh, you it's, think so? You're fine. Is covered. He's covered. Interesting. I didn't think about that. Yeah, he's 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 gonna be fine. You think the uh, GoFundMe can just save him? I think they so. can save him. I think they can. They can. I think he could rustle up enough money. I'm not donating to that one. <laughs> yeah, Wouldn't yeah. be my no, go-to. I mean, I, I, it's it's a dumb thing, but I mean, you got to imagine the rush, though. Oh yeah. He when could, you jump off? Yeah, not not the rush of like doing it, but the rush of the the crowd cheering. My thought as that well. Had to feel good. Is it seems as if maybe the Fire Island Ferry needs to up their game a little bit. Yeah. It seems like they were too bored. They were too bored on the tour if they, they were saying you should just jump off. Yeah. I think that you, if you wanted to really be on it, then I you might be more likely to stay. I think they need some protective netting. Oh, maybe some higher, some higher guardrails. Yeah, <laughs> might be an idea. You just heard the worst of the worst. We'd give you the best of the best, but we'd have to find that. As soon as we do, you'll be the first to know.